Hello everybody, my name is Chris Haleua and I'm a Senior Product Marketing Manager for Adobe Media Optimizer. Uh, we're an advertising solution for search, display, and social that integrates with Adobe Analytics. And because of that work I do, I've become close friends with Sam Panoy Moana from Pahui, who has some real life experience with closed loop attribution, where we take real opportunities and closed sales in our offline CRM systems like Salesforce and pulls them into the advertising and analytics systems that we use. So whether you use Marin, can you double click Google AdWords, Adobe Analytics, or Google Analytics, this will be uh, uh, applicable to you in trying to get to that next step of truth and measuring what the real impact of your advertising is. So I'll turn the time over to Sam and ask a few questions along the way. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. I'm super happy to be a part of this webinar with you today, Chris. And going to go through uh, something that um, I feel strongly about. A lot of our work is based on attribution uh, here at Fahui, where we're helping marketing teams and sales teams to really try to make sense of, you know, what drove what drove the customer to uh, to purchase. And uh, for for B2B companies and service companies, uh, but especially B2Bs, it could be it could be a number of things, and, and the funnel is long. And so um, today we're going to talk about a specific um, technique about how we can pull the offline conversions, as you mentioned, Chris, um, for example, Salesforce opportunities or closed deals, how we can pull those back into AdWords so we can see down to the keyword level really like, you know, what are the keywords that drove those opportunities and there's those closed deals. Um, and <clears throat> this is not necessarily a new topic, but you know, I, our, our goal here today, Chris and I, like we really want to give the audience a visual of how to go about doing this um, because it is it's super powerful you know I call it B2B ultimate weapon or, or whatever but it, it is it is especially powerful when I've implemented this with with the various teams that I have um, you know when they're optimizing before you know to, to form fill and then after they're they're able to optimize to something like cost per opportunity or cost per you know sales qualified lead or something further down the funnel so we can let's get right to it. Um, so just really quickly, like why even bother doing this? I learned a long time ago in door-to-door -door sales, it's not really about how many doors you knock; it's about you know, how many contracts you sign up. I did summer sales; wasn't necessarily my my most favorite job, but uh, I did learn that valuable lesson. And that lesson, you know, applies the same in B2B and in service companies. It's not really about the form fills. It's about the one deals, or really any stage that's further down the sales funnel is going to be better than form fills. And so that's what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, so it turns out that the, the data, I mean, it's, it's a pretty easy concept, but to stitch it all together, it's a little bit of a trick because the campaign and the spend data is found in, in the ad platforms, AdWords being uh, or whatnot. Today we're talking about AdWords, and then the sales data is found in the CRM, as Chris had mentioned. So Salesforce, Infusionsoft, Dynamics, a lot of companies will have their own custom system. Um, and so you just need to keep that in mind. Like the cost in the campaign data is in AdWords, but where does the final conversion data lie? Uh, what, what system? How can we connect the two? Literally a million dollar question. And the reason why I say a million dollar question is because um, let me just give you an example. For one of the companies that we implemented this for, uh, they were able to see that they had poured in nearly a million dollars into a single marketing campaign, and it had yielded them zero customers. And so, um, <laughs> you know, that that uh, was especially eye-opening for the channel manager. I mean, the good news, he, he didn't really know, so it, it's hard to blame him. But uh, But the good news, again, is that going forward, he's definitely not going to make that same mistake because he could see after maybe, you know, $10,000 of spend that that's going to, if that will have generated any customers at all. And so definitely, um, definitely important. The last thing I'll say about this is that I've seen this time and time again where it seems the CFO will always knock on the CMO's door and it's going to ask them, you know, like, you're one of the biggest cost centers in the company. Show me what our company is gaining in return for all this marketing spend. And so you got this thing set up in AdWords um, or, or in Adobe Optimizer. You'll, you'll be able to say with confidence, you know, exactly what, you know, what revenue is being driven by the marketing spend. 
And so before we get into the steps for implementing this, um, begin with the end in mind. So as you can see here, this is, a, this is a campaign report in AdWords. And the columns on the left are going to look are going to look familiar. You've got the campaigns, costs, impressions, clicks, conversions, and whatnot. But then you'll see um, those set of columns that are within the within the dotted box. You've got opportunities, which are opportunities in Salesforce for this particular client. You've got uh, one deals. You've got the revenue from those one deals, and you've got the cost per opportunity and cost per one. So this is this is a lot of good stuff. I mean. Um, let, let, let's let's take a closer look. So, so we'll zoom in. I just wanted to add my uh, support here that uh, as Sam is talking to us about how we need to be able to speak the language of our CMO. Um, uh, sometimes as search marketers, we can get frustrated because we can see that we're driving efficient conversions, but someone up the, the ladder or the totem pole is limiting our budget. And if you really want to get into that range where your budgets um, are unlimited, where you can trade a penny for a nickel as many times as you can, we really got to get past some of these basic conversions that we see in the column next to clicks and into these opportunities and one deals and revenue uh, based on contract amounts that Sam is helping us to do. So I truly do believe that this type of work will be what help us to speak the same language as our C-level executives and get those budgets that we need to help search region reach full potential. Awesome. Yeah, I, I definitely couldn't agree more. Um, uh, at, at the end of the day, you know, they're, they're going to want to know what it's driving to the finish line, and, and this is it. So when you could say confidently, like, for example, in this one, campaign A, we'll say that's the first row, spent 35 k <clears throat> over this time range, and it drove, you know, 71 k in revenue. Um, that's nice, you know. That's that's uh, that's over double. So, so so you spend a dollar, you get two dollars back. And so um, you know, it's, it's nice to have those metrics and and to just prove out with the numbers, you know, what what your spend is is producing. Um, <clears throat> so that's good for outward facing to talk to the to the execs. But but internally, if you're the channel manager, like imagine imagine the the decisions you can make if you know that campaign Let's pause A. on that for a moment real quick. When you talk about the hmm. decisions that we would make as an internal account manager, what have you noticed in your real life experience around search marketers trying to respond to some of these uh, longer term conversions? Because I bet you the difference in time between that original conversion 213 turning into a total one signed contract over there with seven of those that's probably a pretty long amount of time. Uh, what did you usually see your teammates doing around bid or budget optimization with those numbers since they take a little bit longer to come in? Yeah, that, that's a great question. So um, for this particular customer, the, the sales cycle is short. Most of it is going to happen within 45 days. You know, 90% of the eventual deals off of the span will come within 45 days. However, most B2B, or not, not most B2B, but many B2Bs that I've worked with, you know, it's much longer. It could be six months, nine months, over a year. And so um, in terms of being able to speak to the revenue, um, yeah, unfortunately, you'll have to wait a, a long time for it to bake before you could speak with confidence about how much revenue it's generating. Um, but what you can do, though, like if you do have history, and, you know, you can't necessarily do all of this in AdWords. But you know, I've set up a lot of data warehouses for the clients where you're not limited to the 90-day window that you are limited in AdWords. AdWords can only grab, you know, conversion data, you know, 90 days from the point of click. And so, if, if the sales happens after 90 days, you know, AdWords won't have that. However, um, you know, I like to grab all those data points outside in some sort of a data warehouse, and then you know, we we can see six months later, nine months later, how much the the campaign actually ended up in. Um, what I was going to say is with all the historical data, if you do have the long historical data, a year, two years, you can build some trending um, that will say, okay, uh, you spent 34000 two months ago, and now, you know, two months later, you know, that has resulted in so far, we'll say 35000 in revenue, which, you know, two months in, that, that represents, you know, that's 50% that's of what it's eventually going to become based off of historicals. So, you know, that's eventually going to turn into into seventy thousand of revenue, um, 
I guess what I'm saying is if you have the historicals, you, you can still build earlier indicators of trending you know, based off of historical data. Does that, does that kind of make sense, Chris? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So with what you just said of kind of leading indicators, perhaps what you could do then is have this conversions column of online form fields be what you use for your bid optimization, then have the cost per opportunity uh, be what you do potentially for some of your campaign budgeting, and then have the return on true contract revenue be what you do maybe quarterly or even yearly for your cross-channel executive level budgeting. So that totally makes sense. That as long as you use leading indicators to guide bigger and bigger decisions, there's definitely a purpose for each of those columns of data. That's right. That's right. And you know, uh, speaking of opportunities, like most of those, most companies define an opportunity as you know, someone fills out a form today, their sales team is going to call up that lead, and if they pass that initial conversation, that sniff check to see if they have the budget and the interest to, to keep moving forward, that's considered an opportunity. And that happens you know, with most companies between 7 and 14 days. And so it's a pretty quick um, conversion point down the funnel. And uh, you, know, you might even be able to use cost per opportunity for, for some of your bid changes as well. But, but your point is correct. You, you can use in different stages for different purposes. Now that makes a lot of sense. And that's actually one piece of advice that I think is worth really emphasizing that a lot of times we go after just one KPI, one metric, and we have that be the focus of all of our work, whether it's in AdWords with uh, Google Conversion Optimizer or ECPC or in some of the third-party tools going after some sort of portfolio goal. And with what you just said a moment ago of combining both the online conversions and the relatively short-term opportunities, um, I think it's worth combining both of those metrics together in kind of a, a weighted goal. Uh, where you might weight opportunities more heavily than conversions, but both numbers are still considered in your um, in your bid goal and your optimization. Uh, it's usually the the combination of many things that uh, allows us to have the balance of really smart decisions combined with really frequent decisions. I agree. That's that's perfect. Um, you know, just just along those lines too. I think the further you go down the funnel. Um, you know, the, the less control, right, that, that the marketer has over it. And so, or I should say, the more chance that the sales team has to influence that. And so it's definitely a good idea to, to do a weighted goal as well. That's a great idea. Because uh, you'll know the form fills, that's definitely 100% on, on the marketer. Opportunities, um, you know, sales starts taking a little bit of control over that. And so you might not want to weight it all towards that. Yeah, agreed. Okay, so that's great. So, so that's what we're aiming to to set up here after this tutorial. Hopefully, you guys will have um, you know have those steps down so you can set this up at your companies. So, when we get to it, the thing that makes this possible is uh, is the GCLID, the Google Click ID. And let me just let me just get give you a visual on on what the GCLID is. I'm gonna hop out of the out of the PowerPoint and I'm gonna hop into a browser here. So let's just, I'm in Hawaii. If any of you guys are thinking about coming to Hawaii, let's see, best uh, airfare, Hawaii. So we've got Cheapo Air up here. Let's click on the ad. And we'll, let's see if, uh, let's see if Cheapo Air has GCLID tracking set up. And it looks like they do. Just gonna tab over here. There's gonna be a parameter in the query string uh, right here. GCLID. GCLID equals this. So this big long hash is an ID called the GCLID. Um, Google assigns it anytime someone clicks on your ad, as long as you have auto tagging set up, which we'll, we'll we'll look at that in just a sec. But this ID is kind of the key to everything. With this ID, Google knows you know that I typed in best airfare Hawaii that I am browsing from a MacBook Air, uh, you know, here in, here in Hawaii. Um, it, it knows everything about, about my click. And so you'll want to make sure that, um, that you have this set up because we're going to need this all along the way. We're going to need to pass this into the CRM, and this is going to be our key for being able to tie the, the conversions down funnel. 
So let's see, make sure auto tagging is on. Instead of showing you in the slide, I'm just going, going to open up uh, my AdWords account. Let's see, here it is. So while you're pulling up your AdWords okay. account, I'll just throw in uh, another comment here that although I totally agree that the GCLID is the main goal, the Google Quick ID that you're going to want to focus on when you're pulling in the data into AdWords, you'll find that other tools like uh, Adobe Media Optimizer, Kenshin Grin, DoubleClick will also have their own IDs. So for Adobe Media Optimizer, we call it the SQUID or the S underscore KWC ID. And it's a similar mm -hmm. Uh, keyword tracking code that can allow us to tie activity online to what we're eventually going to tie to conversions in the CRM offline. And so regardless of which system you use, uh, just find and replace kind of the GQuid with the main keyword ID you have for your system and the principles will apply as well. Awesome. And so if we come into, that's right, so for AdWords it's the GQuid. Other systems have their own IDs. Uh, you know, some people don't even. You know, some people will just pass in a visitor ID, and then they can track all the behaviors before. For for the GCLID to make sure that's set up in AdWords, you go to Account Settings. And then you've got your Preferences, and then your Tracking Auto Tagging. This one says No Thanks, so let's just edit it. Destination URL auto tagging. Boom. It's all set up. So now anytime anyone clicks on my ad from this account, you should be able to see, you know, this G clip that we took took a look at under the cheapo air uh, ad. Okay, great. Um, step two. You're gonna want to set up a new field in your CRM. So what we're going to do is when someone clicks on your ad, we're going to extract that GCLID from the URL and we're going to pass it into the CRM. However, you can't pass it into the CRM unless the CRM has somewhere to hold that value. And so that's where you can go into your Salesforce and you can create a new custom field um, to, to be able to receive it. Um, if you don't have access to your Salesforce, then you can work with your marketing ops or your sales ops team to do this. Um, there are many other CRMs I realize, and some of some of the companies I work with, you know, they don't even have a CRM. Like they're just sending everything to like a, a Google Doc. Um, so you you'll have to you have you just have to think through like where is my form submission data going to? Um, let me show you an example though. Like let's assume that everyone here is using Salesforce, and this is what you would do in Salesforce to be able to create this new field. So if I log in. I did a little screenshot here. If you go to your upper right hand corner, when you log into Salesforce, you'll see that setup um, <clears throat> link. If you click that setup link, then you'll see over on the left pane, you can go down the page and you'll see build, customize, and on on the leads object, you can click on the leads object, open it up, click on fields. Um, and then you'll see a page that looks like this. Up at the top, just cut off here at the top, you'll see all of the fields that come out of the box for any lead that's created uh, in Salesforce. But down below, you'll see here, lead custom fields and relationships. And you'll just want to click on this new button. Oops. Um, so you click on the new button, and then you can go ahead and create a, create a field for, for the GCLID, for example. And you go ahead and <clears throat> just make sure it's the right data type and and that type of thing. But once you have that set up, um, once once you have that set up, then that's great. Um, if most most companies or a lot of companies, I should say, they'll have leads, and leads can convert into opportunities. If that's the case at your company, you're going to want to repeat this step and create a new field. Um, instead of on the leads object here, you scroll down a little bit more, you'll see the opportunities object. You'll want to repeat this step for the opportunities object. Create a new custom field. And then <clears throat> the last piece as well, if your leads do convert to opportunities, once you have the new custom field for the GCLID set up on the lead and the opportunity, you're going to want to come back to this button here, map lead fields, back on 
back on the lead object. You click on that, and then you're going to want to map the the lead, um, the the custom field for the GCLID on the lead to the custom field for the GCLID on the opportunity. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to pause here for a little bit because that was super important. And one of the reasons why I was so fired up to do this webinar was because I understood these things theoretically, but only Sam really has the experience to get outside of the advertising and analytics systems and into the CRM systems to show us these details. So I'm going to try and summarize my understanding of what you just said, and you can correct me what well. So we have auto tagging set up either in AdWords, Media Optimizer, Kenshi, Marin, DoubleClick, wherever we have our ads being run. And that auto tagging is making sure that if it's AdWord, it's the Greek, the GQuid, Adobe, it's the Squid, or a double click would be flood light, spell light tags. And it's making sure that every time someone clicks on a keyword, that they see um, that unique parameter. Then you're going into the CRM and creating a new lead field, and it's making sure that it's observing that um, URL parameter. Uh, coming in when activity is starting to go in through the sales funnel. Uh, the last part that wasn't super clear to me was how you were building that mapping between the lead and the opportunity. So understanding that lead is kind of at the top of the funnel and opportunity is kind of in the middle before the sales revenue. Um, help me understand a little bit more of the details of that mapping and, and why that works. Sure. So if you think about it, um, you know, mo most leads don't turn into opportunities, at least at, uh, at the companies I've been involved with. And so the way the CRMs are set up is, you know, I can have 100 people that fill out my form today, and if that's the first time that they've ever, you know, come into, into my Salesforce system, then there's going to be 100 new leads created today. Now, um, the sales team is going to call all 100 of those leads to see, to, to, to try to verify their intent and their budget. Um, and so there's only going to be a fraction of those. I think industry numbers, if you go off of serious waterfall, uh, serious decisions, waterfall, it's going to be somewhere between you know 10% uh, of those are going to convert into opportunities. And so 10 out of those 100 are going to you know leave the phone call with the right intent, with the right budget, and then the sales rep is going to create a create an opportunity in Salesforce. That's just the way that the sales teams work. Sales teams do not work. Um, are, are not trying to close leads per se. They're always trying to close opportunities, and so um, that's why this mapping is so important. So if if I was one of the ten that filled out the form today, I had a good phone call with the sales rep. Uh, the sales rep will then create a new opportunity off of my lead, and certain pieces of information from the lead are going to be um, are going to be uh, you know copy and pasted onto that opportunity as well. And if I don't tell it, if I don't tell Salesforce to also include the GCLID on the lead, to the GCLID on the opportunity, then it's going to get left behind, and we're not going to have that visibility to see how that opportunity progresses, you know, if it progresses to the end of uh, of, the, of the sales cycle for one deal. Um, okay, that was really that, helpful. Um, I think I understand. Okay. Does okay. that mean that so, Salesforce actually has code? that's embedded into the landing page so that Salesforce code is actually seeing the GCLID come through when that lead is, is being submitted? That's exactly right. So we'll get to, okay. that's going to be step three or four, but yeah, once once the field is created in the CRM, then we've got to, we've got to now adjust our, our landing page code a little bit so we can grab the GCLID and, and fire it into this new field. So Awesome. So Salesforce sees the GCLID when the lead gets submitted, then passes the GCLID to the salesperson when it turns into an opportunity. That totally makes sense. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, that's right. So um, it will get posted into Salesforce as long as we adjust the code on our landing page. Um, you know, that's the first thing. And then two, as long as as long as there is a field to receive it in the CRM, which is which is this current step that we've been going over. Got it. So in step three, this is what you're talking about. You want to pass the GCLID into the CRM. Uh, some, a, a lot of marketing managers, they have control over their own landing pages, like with Unbounce or something. Um, and some don't. Some you'll have to hand it off to your marketing ops team. But, but the main thing is this. Um, right now, when someone fills out a form, 
there's already pieces of information that they're submitting into the CRM, right? Like your name, your email address, and maybe a phone number. Um, and so you're already passing pieces of information from the form into the CRM. You're going to have to go back to your code. And normally the way I've seen it is you have to create a new hidden field on the form to receive the GCLID. And so I'll go into whatever. If, if I have control over the landing page, I'll just go in and just edit that HTML and add a new hidden input uh, field that's called GCLID. Um, and then after that, you'll have to have, uh, it just depends. If you use Marketo, you can, you know, you could just go in with the interface and just parse that out of, you know, parse that out of the URL, parse the GCLID parameter out of the URL and populate that new field that we just created on the form. Um, but if not, you could use some JavaScript that can go ahead and just parse it out of, parse the GCLID from the URL and uh, place it into this hidden field. And <clears throat> and then the next thing you have to do, you need to make sure that um, upon form submission that uh, this new hidden input field is mapped to your new custom field that you created in the CRM. And that happens right. in a variety of different, yeah. So um, the part that was that, super interesting to me just now is when you said JavaScript could help us out. So if you're one of the advertisers that doesn't have Salesforce code or CRM code on your landing pages, but instead you have code from Adobe Analytics or Google Analytics, then I believe the process would be that Google Analytics or Adobe Analytics would have a piece of JavaScript that would pull the GCLID or the squid out of the URL and store that in a variable. And then what you could do is schedule a, a ID report, a GCLID or a squid ID report, from Adobe Analytics or Google Analytics and send that scheduled report into Salesforce. So either you have Salesforce code on the page with a hidden field, or you have analytics code on the page that you use JavaScript to look at the URL. But in the end, the process is very similar. Yeah, yeah, it should be, it should be similar. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure exactly like Adobe Analytics, their integrations into the CRM. But I know that uh, for for it to get into the CRM, for sure, the you know the the field definitely needs to exist, and there's normally a place to to be able to map any any type of field that's on the on the form, you know, to whatever field is in in the CRM. And so um, I can't imagine it being being much different for for the for the other products as well. Right. I'd like to. I wish I had uh, one of my pages up right now, and I can show you what the hidden input field looks like, but um, I'm just thinking out loud. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to do that right now. So let's see. Let's see. Actually, um, um, Let's go to uh, work front. Let's take a look. I don't know if this is one of the pages that I helped to, to tag, but let's open a firebug here. Let's come here to the form. And let's see, form ID. Yeah, so this is not one of the this is not one of the forms that I helped to tag, but if you can imagine here you see these hidden inputs right here, type equals hidden. You know, if you you're gonna want to set it up so that you have a you have another one here. Input ID, it could equal GCLID type equals hidden, and then you see how it has these values here. You're going to want to parse the GCLID value from uh, from the URL and then have, have your JavaScript just pasted right there. So don't know if that helps or not. I was just, <laughs> I was just, I just thought it, I thought it might be helpful if I dive into it. So Very much so. Yeah, that real-life example was huge. Thank you. Okay. 
so once once the GCLID is being passed into the CRM, that's really that's kind of the heavy lifting right there. So now we're just going to go into AdWords and, and do some work. So the next step is create the offline conversion itself in AdWords. Um, <clears throat> and so you know this could be whatever we want. We'll say for, for this example, we want to import all Salesforce opportunities back into AdWords. And so if we hop into AdWords, you can go to uh, Tools, Conversions, and then let's go ahead and let's add a new conversion. Select how to track your conversions. So we'll just do. It's interesting. This is different. I just set up this account today, so um, normally you want to do it off of clicks. This one here looks like the closest to me. I think it's uh, just a click. streaming app. I bet you if you did a website in the background, that would get you where you want. Okay, let's see. Tools, conversions. Over on the bottom left for either website or e import, probably. Let's see. Am I in the right place right here? If I click on conversion, let's see. Yeah, I'm over on the far there right, that guy. There you go. Nice. Cool. Cool. So just to make sure we get that, so I clicked on tools, not attribution. Let's see, tools, <laughs> conversions. Adding a conversion, and then I want to do a import and the conversions from clicks. There we go. And then let's just go ahead and give it a name. Opportunity. Done. Each time it happens the conversion action has the same value. Let's just go to no currency. We'll just make uh, an opportunity equal to one. Done. Let's see, I want to count just one. So if a lead converts to one opportunity, let's see if one accurate leads to three purchases. No, I just want, we'll just say for this example, just count it as one. So done. Conversion date, conversion window. I wish we can go back further. Like you were saying, Chris, we've got long sales cycles in B2B, but 90 days is, is the limit in AdWords for now. I've told product managers about this. Let's see. Were, were you going to say something, Chris? No. One day we'll get it. <laughs> okay. So we'll go ahead and make this. We'll just leave it as other category. But this is just going to be, you know, for your conversions, you can categorize them. So you can put it as whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it as other. And then <clears throat> let's include it in the conversions. That way it can show up in your, you know, down to the keyword level, it'll be able to pull into reports. So nice. you save and continue. Let's read this message. You're almost finished to import conversions into AdWords. You'll need to capture, store, and transmit Google's unique ad click identifier. This is what we've kind of been talking about so far, steps, you know, one to three. Um, we did We did turn on value tracking and... <clears throat> Let's assume we do have our code adjusted, so it's passing the GCLID in to the CRM. Okay, great. So we see we have this new opportunity, uh, conversion, and that's it. It's pretty simple to, to set this up. Uh, let's, let's see what the next step is. So we've got that. Step five, export conversions with GCLIDs. Okay, great. So. We have auto tagging set up. We're passing the GCLID into the CRM, and now let's go ahead and you know we're, we're going to want to now export um, leads from our CRM um, that have GCLIDs. And so I've got a couple of examples right here. For one client, I went ahead and I ran this export. Um, this these are all of the leads. Uh, 
essentially all, all of the form fills in their CRM um, <clears throat> from the month of October. And so they've got, they've got 99 leads from the month of October. This is the day that the lead was created in Salesforce. And here's the GCLID right here. So a pretty simple export. All I have is the created date of the lead, which we'll need for our import into, um, into, into AdWords, and, and the GCLID, which we'll also need. Uh, these are not opportunities, though. These are just all of the leads. So I went ahead and ran another export, a subset of these leads right here, and I want to know which one of these leads actually progressed to an opportunity. And that's this export right here. So we've got 11. So 11 of the leads progressed to the point of opportunity, and these are the 11 leads right here. And we've got the same thing. We've got the created date of the lead, and we've got the, got the GCLID right here. So you can go about exporting different ways, work with your marketing ops team, but you can you can write simple reports in Salesforce where you just designate, you know, just, just these columns that you want and you can export it manually. Um, <clears throat> you can export it uh, from, from the API as well if you want to try to automate it. Um, so now that you now that you have the export, step six is you know, import the conversions into AdWords. Uh, a couple of caveats. We'll, we'll we'll look at that right now. Like once you create a um, create an offline conversion in AdWords, you're gonna have to wait about six hours before you import anything. And if you don't do this, then it's basically gonna break your conversion. You'll never be able to import anything ever. So just give it six hours to make sure that uh, Google does whatever it needs to do on the back end to set it up. Um, once that's done, then let's take a look now at the CSV format for you to be able to upload um, back into AdWords. And this is it. Um, and I'd like for you guys to pay attention. I mean, I'll, I'll give you a link so you can follow this, but uh, certain things to note, um, it has to be formatted exactly like this, the, the CSV, like these exact words, parameters, colon, entity type equals offline conversions and caps and then you have to have the, the time zone of the account. And so this particular account is, you know, seven hours uh, offset from uh, UTC time, uh, which is uh, Mountain Time USA. And that's it. So that's the first row has, has to look like that. And then the second row has to have these four columns spelled exactly like this. So you've got the Google Click ID column, conversion name, conversion value, and conversion time. And GCLID, as you can probably imagine, that's the GCLID. Conversion name is the exact name of the offline conversion that we set up in the account. And then the conversion value is you know, what we want it to be. Um, for opportunities, it's one. But if you're, if you're importing revenue, then you, know, you would make this into a, some sort of a dollar figure or decimal. And then the conversion time as well. So let's just let's go back to our exports. We exported these opportunities, and let's just go ahead and just zap everything here. Um, <clears throat> let's just paste these. We'll paste these right there. The conversion name that we set up is not called chats, but it's opportunity. Uh, the conversion value is equal to one, and then we can go ahead and let's see right there. You've got our, you've got the times here, and uh, we won't do this now because I don't want to do a bunch of Excel coding in front of you guys, but. You basically need to convert this date format to this date time format. Um, Google's a little finicky on the date time formats it accepts, and so you have to make sure that it's formatted properly. We'll just assume that it is. Paste it right there. And that's it. You could save this CSV, and this would be ready to import. Once again, just make sure you format the time properly. Um, cool. <clears throat> so we're really uh, grateful for the really detailed manual examples. Um, what options do you usually see for people 
to complete this process in an automated way? Well, that's uh, so. If you're if you're uh, if you use Salesforce as a CRM, the good news is AdWords just released just earlier this year. It has like a native uh, integration now, and so you can definitely set up an automated service. I would just talk to your talk to your Google rep, and you know they have they have bodies on their side that are that are going to help you get set up with this. And so, uh, if you don't use Salesforce, though. You know, that's one of the things that we do, or you'll have to just work with your you have to work with your own internal IT team. But that's one of the things that we do is just go in and you know just help people uh, get this set up so it's in, in an automated fashion. We write uh, you know write Python scripts or whatnot to hit the APIs, hit the CRM API, convert it to the right format, upload it properly into AdWords, and so um, okay. this is still so very new. I wanted to work with you on automation of this type of. Uh, of this type of work, uh, what would I need to go to contact you and, and get a, an opinion on whether it would work out for me? Yeah, I'll have uh, my contact information, you know, at the end of the at the end of the presentation. But yeah, feel feel free to just shoot me shoot me an email to my to my email address that I'll show at the end of the presentation. Uh, I'll also have my phone number and. I'm I'm happy to talk to uh, I'm happy to talk to whoever might might want to automate this. So, um, yeah, and once again, you don't have to automate it. I like to do it just so I don't have to, it's just peace of mind. But uh, if you have an admin or whatever at your workplace, they can they could probably do this as well. So, um, <clears throat> okay, great. And so we're almost to the finish line. This seems like it's been a little long. It has been kind of long, but we're almost there. So, right here, this is this is the CSV format. Uh, this is the link right there. Blow it up. No, that's not what I wanted. Play from the current slide. There we go. So www.gstatic.com slash conversion tracking slash conversion dash import dash template.csv. Finish line right here. So actually, we didn't upload yet. Let me show you guys how to upload. If you go to tools, conversions, uploads, and then you can just browse to your file. And uh, let's see, did we ever save this? Let's see, file, save as. I'll save it in my documents as, let's see, test, upload, AdWords, uh, CSV. Um, let me just go over to my documents. You would select it, you would open it. Once again, I don't want to upload this yet because I just created the offline conversion. We just did it together like 15 minutes ago or 10 minutes ago. So, but assuming that you uh, set this up and it's been six hours since you create, created the conversion, upload and preview, um, just and it'll show you like how many of them are going to error out and for what reason. Uh, or, or hopefully, if you did it right, then you won't have any errors. And then you can hit upload and apply, and and boom, it's in. Cool. So when you so, mentioned earlier that we should wait, you know, four to six hours before uploading, that's after creating the metric. It's not necessarily that we have to wait four to six hours after the uh, after the lead or the opportunity happened. Is that right? That's correct. So okay. you just have to wait four to six hours after you created the, the metric in AdWords. Got it. So there, we will have uploaded it, and then next thing you do is you can't pull any. I'm sure most of uh, PPCers will know this, but you can't pull in any of these conversions, custom conversions without without custom columns. And so um, <clears throat> we can go back to. Let's just do one example of creating a custom column. We'll create one for the opportunity that we just for the opportunity conversion that we just created.
So you go to Columns, Modify Columns, Custom Columns, and we'll call this Opportunity. Just give it a little description, SFDC Export, um, SFDC Opportunity uh, Imports, I should say. Then we'll go select the metric conversions, conversions, and conversions, conversion name, opportunity, and that's it. You've got that set up. You've got cost and opportunity. You can create your cost per as well. You can come back in and create another custom column for a cost per opportunity if you want to do that cost for opportunity and we'll, we'll ditch the description on this time around there you go cost per conversion and then you're just going to want to define once again the conversion name and done deal so once that's done You'll notice these columns are now in the report, opportunity and cost per opportunity. We haven't actually imported anything yet, so it's nothing. But uh, once once you do, then boom, there you go. You got the you've got the close close up reporting uh, right there in AdWords. Beauty. Well, thanks, Sam. And you know, I know a lot of you that are watching this might be an advertising specialist that knows the ins and outs of. AdWords being in Yahoo, or you might be an analytics expert that knows how to get around Adobe and Google. But I think that for either of those two personas, there's very few people that have been out there and really gotten into the CRM systems too and figured out how to find that glue of the of the GQuids or the Squids or whatever different IDs you have that are combining these together. So we're really grateful to Sam for helping us see how this works uh, in a manual fashion. And I personally would highly recommend that you check out for who we uh, for Hui.io to go and uh, connect with Sam if you wanted to also automate this connection uh, because you really need expertise and real life experience like he has to get this done in a scalable way. So thanks for the time, Sam. And uh, if you have other contact information, uh, if you have other questions, here's his contact information. And we'll talk to you next time. Hey, thanks, Chris.